This is Duke University. So DDI explores new and emerging technologies and how they might be um, used in teaching and learning, especially at Duke in higher ed. So I'm very happy to say that we've had funding for a number of projects on campus, and Maha's project is one of those that DDI has funded. So I'm going to turn it over to the panel to, to talk about, first of all, the technology. What is 360 video, and what kinds of technology can you use? And then to the others to talk about the project itself. Thanks. Now it has just kind of become something you can go to Best Buy and pick up. Um, they have devices that are available. Um, you'll see a litany of them out there on Amazon that take um, really just a couple of sensors in a single packaged item, and they break it down into something that you can use as a consumer without needing to just be a media master ninja. It combines two sensors and a single camera package, and more importantly, is it stitches that video together for you. So the idea for our project emerged this past spring when the three of us started talking about how we could use technology in Arabic classrooms at Duke um, to gain more interest of students in the department and improve language learning. So by looking at what's already out there, we were able to kind of pull these pieces together to come up with our project. So our project is real footage from Lebanon, Jordan, and Morocco. It is tailored to Duke uh, Arabic syllabi and students work with each other or with professors and has the potential to be used outside of classes. Um, and we believe that this can even be expanded to um, AIMS classes that are not language classes or to even other languages. So uh, my experience with technology started when I came to Duke um, by using first a Go Animate subscription for my students who created animated videos for the service of the community. Um, I'm generally a strong believer in um, humanistic teaching methods. And so I like it when I dismantle the traditional relationship that exists between students and their teacher. And I like it when students take the lead. Um, and the 360 degree cameras have allowed me to, first of all, train students who are not necessarily in my Arabic classes. So we encourage students to film in private or semi-private settings, um, given that a lot of Duke engaged students, especially the ones in Jordan, live with host families throughout the summer um, and spend Ramadan um, in Jordan. We encourage them to, for example, uh, take footage from a Ramadan iftar or you know, going on a trip, on an excursion as a group. So ultimately, students decided what they were filming and when they were filming. But the filming did happen in three different, different international locations. So basically, the equipment had to be um, shipped um, and carried back. Shipped to Jordan, Morocco, and Lebanon, um, and carried back. Um, so VR, or virtual reality, is an emerging discipline. And we have to be creative when we think about the barriers or the difficulties we faced. We have to be creative in finding ways to sort of overcome these barriers. This is why we are hoping that other languages in AIMS, but also in Romance Studies, would take on such an initiative and explore possibilities so that we can have an ongoing conversation at Duke and beyond on how we can overcome these barriers. The way we think we can overcome the barriers in the footage collection are, uh, first of all, a different format for the training, where, for example, we might sit down with the students, go over the thematic units that we will be covering, and maybe see um, or like brainstorm uh, locations or things that they can film. Um, the idea of providing a script, asking for permission, if students are more comfortable doing that, is also a possibility. Um, one difficulty we faced is that the 360-degree cameras, cameras look tiny, but they also look threatening to customs. So the, our 360-degree camera was held by the Jordanian customs officials, and we had to have the program director go pay a fee to have it used in Jordan. Um, so that's another thing that we need to find a way to, you know, to maybe introduce or talk to the customs about it before it's sent abroad. Um, as I said, we encourage students to film things that meant something to them. But the fact that Duke Engage students are the ones who collected the footage 
but the students who used or benefited from the footage are not necessarily the same group, was a disconnect. Hi, good afternoon. So we had a couple of lessons learned when it came to actually gathering the footage. Uh, the, the first is that the cameras we had, they had this nice feature um, uh, that, that if you had a smartphone, uh, you, you could pair it with the camera, um, and, 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 and then you could have it begin, or you can have it begin re recording even if you're like 50 feet away. But it didn't work, so you know, it's, that was a lesson learned there, is that don't trust your technology, you just gotta find another way to do things. Um, and, and then the, the other thing we learned um, uh, w w was, was, that, w was that being that you're trying to find some of these culturally rich environments and you don't necessarily know what's going to happen, it is always good if you have the camera on you so that in the event something interesting happens, you can begin filming. Uh, the filming I did, it, it, it was in Morocco, and I, I found some of the best experiences um, uh, was that if, if you go on guided tours in Morocco, you know, they, they take you to all the different artisans. And if you tell the artisan... Um, if, you t if you tell them that you're trying to develop footage um, that, that'll help teach Arabic and to bring awareness uh, uh, about that person's culture, um, you know, uh, you know or, or, or it's rather, it's, they are, it's glad, it's just to pretty much show you everything that they have in the shop. Yeah, so our, our goal was to, to both make videos that teach about the Arabic culture and the culture of that country, and also make ones that teach about, teach about the language. Um, but we, we have this video. Um, that, that since we have footage from a market in Morocco, a market in Jordan, and a market in, in Lebanon, you are able to walk through each of these uh, different markets, and, and you can see some of the differences between the different cultures. Um, uh, uh, and, and if you turn the sound up on the video too, you can also sort of hear what the different regional dialects are, and, and it's pretty fun on it. So for our, our languages, what we did was we took some of the videos and we put captions on them. So it would have the Arabic word, and it had the English word for it. And, and, and then in a guided class discussion, we would, have, uh, we would have the students put on the headsets and they'd get a couple of minutes to look around and they'd familiarize themselves with the vocabulary. And, uh, and we found that the vocab sort of stuck with the students a little bit better. If the VR headset is actually stuck to your face, um, you know, that it, uh, that you, it, you're not looking at your phone and, and you're not getting sort of distracted, so it focuses your attention. Um, but furthermore, from, from, the, from the learning aspect, you know, um, you know, the, you, you can see the word really in its cultural context. And so what we did with uh, a lesson was we, we went to the Arabic 101 discussion sections. There were six of these sections. We got uh, 58 students, and, and we taught a lesson about the colors. So we, we, we had the Arabic word for the color and the English word for the color, and we, and we let the students put on the headsets, and they'd look around, and they'd try to memorize as many of the colors as they could. And so we had them take the headsets back off, and then we'd all go around the room, and they each shared, uh, each shared what their sentence was based on this new vocabulary. So after running the classroom trial, we sent out a survey to the students to collect their feedback. Um, even though 80% of the students had never used virtual reality before, um, despite this learning curve, 100% of the students said that they wanted to see this in their classrooms used regularly. Um, and then we were really excited that 40% wanted to see it in every single unit, and the other 60% wanted to see it just throughout the semester. Uh, so as we said before, one benefit of this virtual reality is that students are really engaged in the lesson, um, and the students were really enticed by the novelty of it, um, and we even noticed in the trial that the students were a lot more talkative than students usually are in um, language classes because they felt more comfortable. And so the fact that we remember 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, and up to 90% of what we do or simulate has strongly encouraged me to really like, explore the possibilities of using virtual reality in, in teaching languages in general, but Arabic more specifically. So the virtual reality experiences have piqued students' emotional experience uh, by allowing them to live the experience as if they were actually in Morocco or in Jordan or in Lebanon. Um, and the fact that their senses were involved means that this is going to boost their memory. Um, some of the feedback, informal feedback that I got from students is that they felt this experience was more real, more personal, and more fun, and that there was no distraction. Um, and I would like to add that the research that I've read about virtual reality is that students who have different learning styles benefit a lot using virtual reality because they do not, you know, students with attention deficit disorder or students with test anxiety, for example, would benefit a lot and that would help bridge the gap in the glass classroom. 
Some of the least favorite aspects in this experience were that um, I am a little worried about the kind of social or human interaction that will be disadvantaged in a language classroom. Um, virtual reality, just like a lot of technology, is not as flexible as other traditional classroom activities, and it's costly. So if you don't get a grant from DDI, you won't be able to do it. <laughs> So we did our editing with Final Cut Pro. Uh, um, it just involves adding vocabulary text to the scenes, uh, basically picking colors of text that we are sure pop um, for whatever the background is. We add arrows to highlight certain moments if we're trying to teach a verb in the video. Um, we're working on exploring audio options um, to make sure that we're highlighting cultural aspects. There are some ideas that we have, aims, will hopefully help us institutionalize the use of the equipment. And maybe if we start um, allowing students to actually have fun and experiment with the headsets and the virtual reality equipment outside the classroom, then they're going to feel ownership of the project. And then they can start creating their own videos. Um, another thing that I was thinking about is that um, I would like this virtual reality experience in helping students teach the language become more, even more immersive and eventually um, become a virtual blended learning or what's called a virtual blended learning experience where all the students' senses are involved but also where they can interact with others as part of their virtual, virtual learning experience. Um, it's very important to see how students acquire the language, not just what the final output is. So the process is as important as the product. 